Hey, what's up, friend? Are you a mama who wants to stop just getting by? Maybe you're motivated to grow yourself in your motherhood, your marriage, and you want it to bear fruit. Or maybe you want to stop letting the mom guilt, the shame, the limiting beliefs, and lies. I mean, amen. That's me right there, sister. And start stepping into the woman and the truth that God has created you to be. While we're juggling all the things, right? Nursing a baby, battling laundry, trying to keep it together, and a spicy marriage. But where the heck do we start? Hey friend, you are in the right place. I am here to hold your hand through this journey because I believe when you're ready to take control of your life, beat the limiting excuses and step into the woman God created you to be, you can not only survive, but you can thrive. But you're gonna have to show up for yourself. It's time for me to tough love your way through taking self-care seriously, investing and growing in your marriage and owning your motherhood and getting rid of those excuses because the glory is in the journey, it's in the mess. In this podcast, you'll find navigating mom guilt, mindset, and marriage strategies, and everything in between with no fluff and lots of fun. Let's go. I want to remind you that the Marriage Method course is now available if you want to fully give in to your marriage you want to go all in 100 percent, and you want to get rid of that meh marriage maybe you like really want to get back on track maybe it's that you fully want to feel 100 percent like yourself again maybe you really just want to find the joy in your marriage you want to start prioritizing again you want it to be the best you want it to experience its fruitfulness that god has for you and store through your marriage and you're ready to do the work and show up to deepen your marriage in a new and fun and exciting way Y'all, do not wait till you're 10 years from now and you're looking back and you're like, what the heck happened to us? Like, kids are out of the house now. Who are we? What do we do with this relationship, right? Do not wait till you get to that point. Let's start enjoying our relationships, our marriages, and feeling 100% like the best version of ourselves right now. So if that is you, hop in, look at the uh, show notes on this episode. There's a link. You can go there, check out what the marriage method is. It's amazing, by the way, (laughs) but you can go look for yourself. Check out that link below. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Soshi Girls podcast. Hold on one second. Okay, much better. Y'all, I am working hard for these straight teeth. I had to quickly take out my uh, Invisalign trays because I was like talking with a list, you know, like I'm a middle school kid with the drool all coming down the side. Yeah. Not great for podcasting, but I wanted to hop on and give you a ultimate tough love episode of me hoping to drive home the point of the fact that we only have one shot at this life, at this um, journey. We only have one chance to do it right. We only have one marriage. We only have one, um, hopefully, right? Like we only have one life. We only get this one shot and I don't want you to blow it. I don't want you to look back at 80 years because you guys, you hear this a ton when you talk to old people. It's like, I regret that I didn't just do the things. I regret that I didn't just spend time with my kids. I regret just not getting in the pool and playing like, right? And so I think that if we keep that in mind with all the things that we do, whether it's putting on a bathing suit or going all in on our marriage or having the best intimacy with our spouse possible, right? Like then we won't allow those things to hold us back because we will remember that we only have this one shot. I really only have four main places that I feel like you just need to go all in on and really remind yourself of this thought, right? Okay, so the first one is relationships. Either take massive action or move on, okay? Like if your husband is annoying you, your spouse, either deep dive into investing your marriage or move the heck on. We only have this one opportunity, right? So why are you spending your relationship with somebody who is toxic and is refusing to change, is refusing to do therapy with you, is refusing to grow? And here's the deal. Even if you guys do decide to do something, to take action, it takes time. But the fact that you're moving in a forward motion is growth, is good, is good for your marriage. It's going to make changes. It's going to do small little things along the way, which is better than just sitting in your meh marriage, right? Just sitting there and being like, oh, like, you know, dealing with all these things like, oh, well, that's just how it is. Like, I guess we'll just have to, I'll never get to experience getting flowers on my anniversary or whatever it is, right? Like it's big and small things, right? So we have to 
take responsibility for our marriages. There was a time, like I said, I mentioned this before, in our marriage where we were just in a really tough place. We needed to start over. We needed to start connecting to each other. We needed to have conversations. Like, we needed to do something. So we decided that we were going to date every single Friday night. We were going to make it happen. You guys, if it's expensive, I know, right? Like, We have kiddos. Finding a babysitter and paying money is not ideal, but you have to do something. So our solution was to go on a date night. And we did every Friday night. And bless our Gigi, right, that she knew what we were going through. Like we kind of told her, hey, we really need to focus on our marriage. It's important to us. Can you really like just mark out every Friday on the calendar for us? For the unforeseeable future, right? Like we did this until we felt like we were in a healthy place where we could back off a little bit. And then we backed off a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more, right? And now we're in a season to where I'm like, I need it back again because we've had transitions. We've had season changes and we've had trials. And so we need to reconnect. It's important for us to have our time to ourselves. And you have to do it. You just have to do it. You have to ask yourself if the way things are right now, can your marriage survive much less thrive 10 years from now. Like, what does that look like? Like, you're afraid to ruffle feathers now. But friend, there may be no rough, no feathers to ruffle 10 years from now, because you may not even have a relationship. A lot of the things that we go through, we try to ignore, we try to um, forget, we try to just get by, but it'll come to bite us in the butt. That's why you see a spike in marriages when kids leave the nest, because there's no reason for those two adults, those human beings to no longer be linked to one another because they've lost a lack of intimacy. They've lost a lack of connection. They've lost a lack, you know, a friendship. They've lost um, a sense of, um, you know, togetherness other than just doing life side by side. And we want to do life as a team right? Like we want to enjoy it in the best way possible. And it's not all sunshines and rainbows, right? But if I was to, if somebody was asking me today, if I wanted to fight with anybody else, because I'm going to fight with whoever it is I am, the grass is not always greener on the other side. It is true that it is greener where you water it. Okay. There are exceptions to the rule. Cause I know you guys, some of you guys are like, Oh, well my husband was doing this and this and he was stealing money from me, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Exceptions of the rule. Okay. But for the most part, in most of our marriages, everything is figure outable, right? Like Marie Forleo says, or fixable. It's that we are getting in our own way because either one, we don't want confrontation. We don't want to do the work. Somebody doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Right. And so we just let things pass and we just say, oh, I guess, you know, he's just not that type of guy. Well, was he when you were dating? Did you know that you were getting into that kind of relationship? Like, it's funny. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) I'm not even going to go on. Never mind. I'm not even going to go into that downward spiral. But evaluate if the way things are now will produce a thriving, happy marriage 10 years from now. And if not, then sister, do something. Do you want to really go through 80 years of your life just sort of connected to somebody? Or do you want to go through the next 80 years of your life just looking at your life like, man, I love this person. I can't do anything. I would I would be devastated without doing my life with per- this person, right? Like you would be half missing, right? <laughs> You want those kind of relationships, and this is relationships in general, right? Like, we have the ability to make the choice to cut the people out that don't serve us, right? Or that affect our mental wellness, right? We have the ability to hide people on social media. We don't have to defriend them. We don't have to cause drama, but we can hide what they're seeing. We choose to go there. We choose to allow those people to seep into our brains, to our hearts, and to our minds, right? To affect us in negative ways. So in all relationships, we can either go all in be vulnerable. And yes, you do get hurt. And yes, you do um, have trials and and valleys and stuff that you go through. But what is the what is the worst thing that could happen, right? That you gave everything and you could look back and say, you know what? I gave 110%. I gave 110% and I did everything in my ability to show up the best way I could. I became the best version of myself. And all you'll lose is that relationship. But you can know that you gave it your all. And then when you come out of it, you're much better for it because in the meantime, you were growing yourself and you became the best version of yourself, right? And then you get to live life and experience it in the fullest, right? And I get, I may get heat from saying all this, but you guys know that I say this with love and I say it because I'm working through it, right? Most of the things I do or say on here is because I am also going through it with you. <laughs> and I know that there are stipulations, right? I know that there are special circumstances, but for the most of us, 
marriage is just plain messy, right? And we just have to commit to it. We just have to get our hands dirty and really get in there and be like, you know what? I don't want this for the rest of my life, right? Like I want it to be you, but we got work to do, right? And so, I mean, you just, it's, it's that simple that you make the decision and then you start putting in the work. And does it take time? Because And does it, is it hard because you have kiddos? Like right now, I can't get my kiddo to sleep for the life of me. He's supposed to be taking a nap right now. And every time I come over here, like I'll get him playing with a toy or get him occupied doing something. And the minute I start speaking to this microphone, he's over here. <laughs> I know. He's over here by this desk in a second. So... I know, I know it's hard with kids, right? It's hard to go to therapy. It's hard to plan and, and carve out time for a date night. And it doesn't have to be going out to dinner. It doesn't have to be this grandiose idea, this grandiose thing, right? It just is you choosing to show up as best as you can in a way that is going to impact your marriage that is fitting for the season of the life that you're in. And that may mean trusting your oldest with the kiddos while you and your hubby go for a walk around the neighborhood every single night, right? And it's going to be awkward. I talked about this before too. When we first started going on date nights, I had questions from Pinterest in my phone. And God does not steer you wrong. When you start including him and putting him back at the center of your marriage and you start showing up for your marriage, he is all about that. He is going to help you out, sister, okay? Like best thing I've we could have done for our marriage was start going to church again, start diving into um, communities that were all about marriage and a godly centered marriage and then finding those people to influence us in our marriage and like what that looks like. It was such a blessing. So I just want to say to you, I understand marriage is messy. Everybody's marriage has issues. All right. We just all have different areas, but we have to choose to take massive action or stop complaining about the things that we don't like. If we're not going to do anything about it, then we're going to stop complaining about it. The second category of our lives that I feel like you should hold yourself to that standard of, hey, I've only got this one chance, this one shot. I should be taking care of myself and my health. God gifted us this temple, this one body, this one vessel that gets us to and from, that helps us care for those we love, that helps us care for our families, the people around us, that helps us to do what we want to do to achieve what we want to achieve, to go after the dreams, to live this life that we only have the one opportunity to live. So why not give your body the best experience so you can experience life at its fullest, right? Why does it have to be that? It's not until somebody has a health issue happen or a health scare or a relative has a health scare. Or somebody passes away that we're like, oh, no, maybe I should be exercising more. Maybe I should be drinking soda less. Maybe I should be um, focusing on my mental health more. Maybe I should like something has to happen. Right. Like and, and that's so sad because at that point, it's really hard to go backwards. It's really hard to put the house back together after you've burnt it down. Right. Like. It takes a long time to rebuild. Why do we do that to ourselves? Right now, there are so many tools, and I know it's overwhelming, right? You can Google taking care of your body and so many things come up, right? But it's not about those things. I think that's where we get caught up is it's like the diets and all these fat exercises and what do I do? What do I do? You eat real food, veggies, fruits, meats, and water, right? That's all we need. It's all the extra stuff that we add in, the pastas, the processed things, the Taco Bell, the frozen pizzas. And I know life is busy. I know it is. So there's grace for that, right? Like I'm no stranger to the Chick-fil-A drive through line, okay? But as a whole, like when I think about it, I am not picking up dinner three nights out of the week. I am making sure that our kids are having a home-cooked meal that is healthy. And it doesn't have to be this five course crazy meal. Sometimes it's a salad where I throw some grilled chicken on that I cooked real quick, right? It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just food, right? It's just fueling our body with the things that it will help it to thrive. I have seen many people in my life and this gets me fired up because I can preach it, preach it, preach it. I used to feel so awful all the time. And I think we feel that way most of the time. I think most people can relate to feeling bloated, to feeling like, oh my gosh, my brain is always jumbled or I'm forgetful all the time or um, I get indigestion or gas. And we think that that's just a part of our normal bodily function because we've chosen to ignore it or we've chosen to just assume that it's part of normal body function, right? It's so wrong. You can feel the best 
when you treat your body the best. And I think that we're just so caught up in societal norms of like you go out and you eat fast food and you eat all this junk, all this junk and all this bread and all this stuff. And you don't realize that your body is screaming, please stop doing this to me. The overtiredness, the fatigue, the depression, the anxiety, the acne on your skin, the acne on your back, the oils in your hair, all of that, the redness in your skin, right? Your eyelids, whatever. It is all signs of your body saying, hey, pay attention to me. So I'm telling you, I don't like this. I'm telling you something's not right. For me, it was finding out that I had an autoimmune disease and cutting out gluten and dairy. Initially, I have now been able to insert dairy back into my life in small doses and it's a specific kind of dairy and the moment I eat it I know my body's like nope 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 gluten does the same thing to me like I cannot eat gluten at all anymore um, it affects my brain it affects my stomach it makes me have awful stomach cramps I went from feeling awful to finally getting an answer for why my body was feeling that way and I know everybody says oh gluten I couldn't cut that out it's so hard I love my chicken strips I love my um, chicken express I love my blah 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 right no, <laughs> you either love your love these fatty foods or you love your body more. What's it going to be? I made the overnight decision to cut gluten out like that because that is what was needed for my body specifically. And I did it overnight. And all I did was start with eating fruits, veggies and meats. There's no gluten in that, y'all. We don't have to get complicated. We don't have to be like, oh, what do I replace this? No, just start with the basics. Feed yourself real good food. Feel the difference of what that feels like. And now I don't even care that I'm, I, mean, I don't even feel like I'm missing out on anything, to be honest. I don't at all. In fact, it's the opposite. I feel sorry for those who are still cause, letting inflammation rule their lives and they're getting migraines and they're getting headaches and they're tired and their skin is yucky or they have stomach issues constantly, right? And I'm like, girl, I knew that. I knew that story. That was me. Listen to me. Go figure out what is causing inflammation in your body. Stop eating it. And I promise you, you will never regret the decision to put your body first, to prioritize it, despite how costly it can be sometimes, right? But if you think about it, when we go to the doctor and the ERs and all the prescription medicines, like if you were to add that up, it would be the same amount, if not way more, right? It may not be out of pocket at first, right? But over time, if you look at those bills, I bet you we pay more in that than we would spending an extra few dollars on good quality meats, good quality supplements, veggies, fruits, right? Anyways, y'all, I could get fired up about that. <laughs> and again, I say this out of love because I want, like, don't you want to be able to run around with your grandkids and your great grandkids, right? And still be able to bicycle. Like, y'all, it breaks my heart to see people that had such vibrant lives. And then, of course, there are health issues that happen out of, you know, out of our hands, right? Something, some things just happen and we have no control over them, even if we do take care of our body, okay? But we can control what we can control and we can put into our hands the things that we put in our body like that we have control over. And I feel like you can feel good about, hey, even if I was to get sick, I know it's not because of my lack of care for myself. It's just because those were the cards that I was dealt. But not only that, like when we feel good, we can wake up better. We could serve our family better. Our brains feel good. We have more energy, probably more intimate with our spouses because we're eating good foods. We feel good foods. Our body functions better when we take care of it. So drink water, sleep, right? This is a struggle for me because I'm a night owl and we have kiddos. We have toddlers. And so like I want me time when everybody's asleep. But I have to tell myself, wait a minute, like I got to go to bed. I got to go to bed. Otherwise, I'm like toast during the day. And then when I'm doing run around errands after I pick up the kids from school, I'm like, oh, I need my Starbucks coffee. You know, I need some like matcha. I need something to help me get through the day. Right. And so then we put we tend to go towards those more junky snacks, those caffeinated drinks because we're tired. We're trying to get through. Right. And then that's starting the vicious cycle of like, well, now we're giving our body things that it hates, things that is forcing us to function. Right. Like, could you imagine being a hamster and running on the hamster wheel? And your and like this hamster is tired. It's sweating. It's like ready to fall asleep, and it's just barely moving its feet on this hamster wheel. And then you, as the owner of this hamster, shove like some caffeine liquid in its mouth, and its brain is like, "I'm done. I'm done." But then you're forcing its body to still keep moving, right? That's what we're doing to ourselves, and it's awful. And I want so much more for you because you deserve so much more for you. So sleep, drink water. Eat real foods, good for you foods, right? And it's okay if you have pizza. It's okay if you have chocolate occasionally. Man, like it's just about fueling your body in the best way possible, okay? 
And then moving your body, moving in some sort of way, whatever way feels good to you. I used to do intense workouts. And then once I got had this autoimmune disease, I realized I can't do that to my body anymore. It was making my body feel worse, even though you think like, oh, exercise is great. No, that high intensity was actually putting a lot of stress on my body. So then I started doing yoga and combining it with like low intensity workouts and that were still as impactful, right? And then riding my bike, you know, walking, rollerblading, things like that. And it makes you feel so good, not only for your body, but for your mental health. Oh my gosh, there's so many other benefits where it helps you with your endorphins, intimacy, right? It just bleeds over when we take care of ourselves into and pours out into everybody around us. We could serve better. We could show up better. We feel better about ourselves, right? So I am pleading with you. You only have this one life. You only have this one body. We only have this one vessel. Invest in it. Invest in yourself. It never goes to waste. Investing in yourself is never wasted. You're only becoming a better version of yourself every day and you will love the person that you become each and every day more and more. And isn't that such a blessing, right? Okay, and because I feel like I've had enough (laughs) tough love conversations with you, um, we are going to only talk about this last area of our life that I feel like you need to consider the, the fact that we only have this one life, this one chance, and that is to be present. Um, It's something that I struggle with. We all struggle with because, hello, your phone is amazing. I love it. I love social media. I love Instagram. I love connecting with you guys. I love uh, watching TikToks. I love watching other moms do their thing. I love, I love, I love it all. Okay, so it's hard. So we make the rule that we don't have any electronic devices out at the dinner table at all. We don't, we're not on it. No TV, no nothing, because you cannot buy time. You cannot take back time. And when you talk about interviewing old people and the things that they regret, they would wish for more time, more time with their kids, being present, more time just jumping in the pool with their kids, right? And back then, it wasn't the phone. It was uh, socializing with other friends um, or letting societal, you know, pressures or whatever, you know, whatever they felt they were supposed to show up like, they let that stop them from actually doing what they wanted to do and being who they wanted to be with their kids, being present. Um, I know for a fact that when I've even just one pod in, right, like one air pod in, it obstructs my hearing. And that's when you miss those overhearing, you know, those moments that you can't replace. Overhearing those conversations in passing, right? Like you're just passing by your kids' rooms and you hear something, one of them say something sweet to the other one, right? And you're just like, (gasps) and then you text your husband, you're like, oh my gosh, guess what I just heard, right? But when we're constantly connected to the outside world, we are constantly checked out to those around us. So we have to practice being present and it's hard and it will, you will fail and you will pick it back up again and you'll be like, okay, set my phone down. I catch myself all the time carrying my phone from room to room. And I'm like, great. Why am I doing this? Like my phone, I'm, I'm showing that my phone is valuable, right? Just like you would carry a baby from room to room. Like how does that make sense that I'm equating the value of my phone the same as I would the value of my infant child to where I feel like it's important to carry it from room to room. I can just put the ringer on, leave it in one part of the house so that way I can be focused, living in the moments because these seasons are hard. The days are long, but the years go by so fast and we cannot replace the time that we will miss in these stages, right? They're only this little for so long and it may be hard, right? There may be days that we want to forget, okay? I'm in the midst of what I think is the toddler twos right now and um, it's scary, okay? (laughs) But at the same time, I'm looking at my 11 and my eight-year-old And then I look back at my two-year-old and I'm like, dang, like it's hard to raise you right now. You're lucky you're so cute. But I know that the time goes by so fast and you'll only be this little for a flash of an eye, right? Like a blink of an eye. (laughs) And I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. And I don't want my kids to miss me being present in their lives. I catch myself all the time being on my phone all the time. And it breaks my heart when I imagine what my littles are seeing or what I'm signaling to them when I have an AirPod in and they're trying to talk to me or when I have my phone up and they're trying to talk to me, it shows that I'm unavailable or I'm only half there or they're only half important. And then they still need me, right? That's why they're like, mommy, 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 this, mommy, this, mommy, this. Do you realize that our kids want and need our attention? And so the less that you pay attention to them, the more that they're like 
screaming and needing and craving your attention and your quality time. And so if you think that by ignoring them, you're going to get more things done, you're probably going to get what instead a whole lot of mommy, mommy, look, mommy, look, mommy, look, come here, come here. Let me show you this mommy, mommy, mommy. Instead of if you just took 15 minutes to spend quality time with them, they would feel fulfilled, right? Like it's the same when we go home to our spouses and we need to tell them all the things and we need them to pay attention and hear us, right? Like why would we not expect that from our kids as well? So I just want to say it is hard because social media is life right now. That is our life. Most of us don't have landlines. Our phones are our everything. It has all of our information, the way to connect to the outside world. It's our phone, all these things, right? At the same time, there are living, breathing people in the same room with you. But instead, we are choosing to focus on the people across the world who we hardly know. We're commenting on threads that have no impact on the world changers or the marriages that are sitting right in front of us. There are things that we need to work on, that we need to focus on, that we need to pay attention to. And yes, mama, you deserve time to check out and to decompress. But sister, I promise you're going to want to do it when your kiddos are asleep. Because we cannot replace time. And just like anything else, we don't shame or guilt ourselves. We go, whoops. Oh, man, you know what? And I say this out loud, too, because my kids are going to mess up. And I want to know that they are going to mess up. And I want to know that, you know, that it's okay. But it's what you do when you realize you mess up. So out loud, I'll be like, oh, man, I'm on my phone so long. I'm so sorry. I'm going to set it down. I ha- you have my attention. Heck, I even do it when nobody's around. I'll be like, oh, why am I doing this? And then set it down. And I'll be like, you stay there. I am going outside and I'm going to work in the yard. I'm going to connect with my Lord. I'm going to pray. I'm going to connect with nature because it makes me feel good. I'm going to go for a walk without like, do you guys know when we forget our car, our phone in the car or at home and we go out and we're like, oh my gosh, it was so free. And then we like forget about it five seconds later. We're like, do, 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 do on it all day long. Like we, <laughs> that's a signal guys that we feel good and it's good for our brains to de- disconnect and decompress without some device constantly attached to our hands. So those are the three things that I feel like I really wanted to drive home and for you to um, measure up like what are you doing with with this idea of like man we only have this one life it's a one opportunity right and we're gonna mess up but it is what you do once you've evaluated and then you just go oh crud like and then get back on get back on the road it's this constant like veering off and then being like oh so if I could tell you the three areas where I really want you to take seriously this idea of going all in so you can be at your best self or living life to its fullest experiencing life as its fullest giving it all that you have is in relationships your self-love and health and then being present today and you guys I'm not perfect at this. I'm talking to myself about this. I'm trying. I suck at drinking water, so I'm buying cups that help me. I'm 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 realizing that hey, I drink better out of a straw, so I'll go get a straw, right? Like I am constantly evaluating what is working, how can I show up better, and then just making small changes every day to move towards that and I fall off the horse and then I get back on again, right? It's only when we let 30, 20 10, 15 years go by when we've done nothing, when we've just gone through a meh marriage or a meh life or like, you know, we're just kind of somewhat showing up, somewhat caring for ourselves, that we'll find that we're constantly struggling, that we'll find that we're constantly missing out or comparing or or not feeling fulfilled, okay? And I, I don't want that for any of us, right? Like I remember what it feels like for my marriage to be not so great. And just imagining what that would be like, having to endure and go through that. And if my marriage would even last that long, was sad. And so looking back, I'm like, man, had we not made those choices to show up for our marriage and make these changes because we only have this one shot to give it a go and give it all we got, like it would, it would be non-existent. And then I look now and I'm like, because we did that, wow, what a beautiful blessing this marriage has been. What a beautiful journey it has been, right? Right. And so I'm grateful for the fact that we showed up and we decided to go all in and we decided to go hardcore on those changes that we decided to take massive action instead of just uh, going along with it, right? Again, I say all this with love. I say it because I care. I say it because I really want you to experience life at its fullest. But you only have this one shot, guys. 
what are you going to do with it? Hey, what's up, friend? If you found this episode valuable, you find this podcast valuable, helpful to you in any way, I urge you to share it with your friends, to screenshot it, show it, shoot it up on IG stories, tag me at the Ash Carol, and I would love to see what your favorite episodes are, what you're listening to, and to have other mamas join in on this journey of motherhood with us in a way that it, we are growing, we are evolving, we're changing, we're loving our marriages more, we're helping ourselves love ourselves more, right? So if you feel like you've gained something from this show so far, subscribe so you don't miss out on another episode. Share it with another friend. Leave a review. And I can't wait to see you back for the next episode. It's going to be good. I'm so excited that you're here.